Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Sunday, March 4th, 11.32 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the GFS total snowfall for the next 10 days, and you'll see the east coast is going to be pummeled. The same areas that were hit by the former storm. And we have a blizzard developing in the upper plains. Winter Storm Quinn will bring blizzard conditions to the northern plains and spread heavy snow into the upper Midwest. We just saw that on the map. Winter Storm Quinn will bring blizzard conditions to the northern plains early week. We'll also spread snow and gusty winds across the Midwest and Great Lakes. Dangerous travel conditions are expected. Road closures will happen. We can come to the GFS model and take a look at the storm. The current position is 998 millibars here, just right in the center here uh, between Minnesota and North South Dakota, right where the trifecta is. So this storm is going to quickly develop, move across South Dakota. Here's the major snow, snow totals. Uh, weaken as it bombs out here to the east. But look what happens here in the Philadelphia area. And it's going to go right up into the northeast at 988 millibars. 986, it's going to drop the isobars off of Boston here on March 8th, Thursday. Heads up Thursday for Boston. That's what the GFS model is showing. Now heavy snow and very strong winds are forecast. Blizzard warnings are in effect for Philip, Pierre, South Dakota, Winter, up to Lemon, Buffalo County. Winter weather advisories for spe Spearfish, Sturgis, Rapid City. High wind warnings down in Custer. Here are the snowfall totals, 12 to 18 in Mobridge, 8 to 12 in Ashley, 8 to 12 in Pierre, 8 to 12 in Chamberlain. Heads up, South Dakota, you're about to be buried. Coming over to the Weather Ready Nation warning map, blizzard warnings for almost the in half of the state of South Dakota here. The entire state of North Dakota is in winter weather warning. All of eastern Montana almost all of Minnesota. This is a huge system. And then we have gale warnings here, high fire warnings in these regions of Brown and Magenta. There are still flood watches up in the Mississippi Valley here. I'll leave you links to all of this information as usual. Now, Winter Storm Riley, the aftermath. This is coming from Pennsylvania. Give you a little taste of what happened as this storm bombed through the Poconos. Dresher Township, Wayne County. Baba buried. I remember the Pocono storms. Er. It's a battle to get anywhere today. While snowfall totals may have varied widely from town to town, residents throughout the region woke up with lots of snow and headaches in the area in the wake of a historic storm. Nearly two feet of snow blanketed town, 60 mile an hour wind gusts ripped apart trees, leaving thousands without power and many stranded across the roadways. The military was out, National Guard was called. Sunday snowfall breaks the 100-year-old daily record. Today's first boom. One of the snowiest years on record. Crews are working overtime to clear the streets. This is Great Falls. In Minnesota, eh? Great Falls broke the 100-year daily snowfall. Record for March 4th, Sunday, as heavy snow blanketed a large portion of Montana. Seasonal snowfall in the city is now almost three feet above normal. Heads up! <laughs> 
This is the important part here, folks. So you should be massaging this area. And that's a boom. As of 5 p.m., 5.1 inches of snow had fallen Sunday in the city, breaking the former daily record of four set back in 1918, bringing us back to the uh, centennial minimum. Back here, solar minimum of cycle 1415. The solar science doesn't lie, folks. Neither do the maps. Official snowfall measurements are taken at the Weather Service. Snowfall amounts of 6.5 were reported east of Great Falls. Three to six are common throughout central Montana, Martin said. Great Falls received 73.1 inches of snow from July 1st, 2017 through Saturday. And that is a boom. Montana's being buried, and it doesn't look good because the snowfall is not ending through March. Thousands still without water after snow chaos, and the beast from the east crushes the UK. Customers of Anglian Water, Servant Trent, Southern Water, United Utilities, and Thames Water among the affected. That's not a few. Thousands of homes across the UK and Ireland are without running water after thawing temperatures. What does that mean? Causes pipes to burst and leak. Freezing temperatures, folks. Thames Water was faced criticisms resulting in landing bottles to customers after 20,000 properties in London and Thames Valley had their supplies cut off. And these are live tweets today. There's no water collection. I, this woman has to pour bottled water down her pooper. And so on and so forth. I'll leave you links to this. Bet you didn't hear about that. This is only the beginning of what is going to unfold over the coming decades. And the next three years are a primer. And there might be an event in the next three years that unfolds that sends us off into the new normal. Papua New Guinea earthquake, strong aftershock, rocks highlands as 150,000 people wait for aid. This is not, this is the fourth aftershock now. There's 150,000 people in urgent need of food and water supplies, hundreds dead. The main total right now is only 86, but M6.0 aftershock hits Papua New Guinea, fourth M6 in some time. Come over here to the latest earthquake map and let's check out what's going on seismically. Look at this region. It is being pummeled. We have a 5.0 ticking off just moments ago in Papua New Guinea. Here's a 4.2 in Oklahoma we're going to talk about momentarily in Enid. But look at the aftershocks stacking up right near the volcano that we uh, reported on. Bosavi. Right here, just to the south. But these are kicking off uh, major events, cause, killing more people. The magnitude 6.0 aftershock hit Southern Highlands province of Papua New Guinea at 1956 UTC on March 4th. The fourth M6 plus earthquake to hit the region after the M75 main shock on February 25th. Officials report received the March Three mention at least 156 dead so far. This is the region of the aftershocks we just showed you on the USGS map. There it is. 4.2 earthquakes shakes Oklahoma. One of our viewers is right from the Enid area. Giving us a heads up right when it happened. The shaking, which started at 5.17 p.m., was the result of a 4.2 earthquake centered near Enid. And because the humans that inject toxic waste into the subsurface here should all be imprisoned. Mayon's activity is a new update in the past 24 hours as characterized by general quiescence. There are gravity-driven lava flows and degassing from the summit crater. Two events between 12.42 p.m. and 3.23 p.m. lasted three to four minutes, generating ash plumes that rose 250 meters above the crater before drifting southwest. At night, lava flows are observed to continue moving downslope. 
within 3.3 kilometers, 4.5 kilometers, and 1.9 kilometers from the crater in the Mi Isi Boga and the Basu Gullies, respectively. A total of 44 volcanic earthquakes and 53 rockfall events have been recorded. Sulfur dioxide emissions are measured on average of 1,403 tons per day going out into the atmosphere. Deflation of the lower slopes began on the 2nd of February, is still being recorded by the tiltometers. Nonetheless, overall electronic tilt and the continuous GPS data indicate that the edifice is still swollen or inflated relative to the November-October consistent with the campaign. So this volcano is still set to blow. Volcanic update worldwide. Reventador, volcanic ash, continuous discrete emission. We also have Fuego, Popo, Ducono, Mayon, Sabancaya, and others. I'll leave you links to this if you want to peruse the list. Guys, before we close the video, <coughs> I want to talk about the prediction from the CMIP6 for the deep minimum that we're going into here, the eddy minimum, and the cosmic ray increase prediction. You're looking at the cosmic ray prediction coming from CMIP6. Here we are currently, 2018, at the solar minimum between 24 and 25. And you can see where we're headed. And this causes increased flooding of biblical proportions, cloud nucleation, and climatic changes unlike un, the likes of which humanity has never seen. It's not even close to anything back here in the Centennial or Dalton minimum. Literally off the chart, and it remains up there for hundreds of years. So it doesn't look good for planet Earth in the near future unless we change everything we're doing in a more sustainable way and one that protects crops from destruction like massive hail and huge flooding events and atmospheric compression as well as huge snow events making it very difficult for grain production in certain areas this is coming out one of the hail events we're talking about and this is some footage coming out from Australia. If you're standing out there, you're dead. These are tennis ball size hail. And your livestock is dead. Any animals that are in the field at this time, you'd have no way it's coming. They would all be dead. This is the beginning of the uptick. As the cosmic rays increase, the hail is going to increase. The windshields are going to continue to break. Your life is going to be at risk if you do not have a structure that is safe to get to. The historical record confirms 18 centimeter hail in London causing the food riots in 1801. And we have seen almost a half a dozen hail events above four inches or 10 centimeters happening within the last six months. These events are only going to continue to increase as we descend and the cosmic rays increase. Guys, our ad account has been flagged for policy violations. We're also blocked from sharing in groups. So if you can get the word out, share in your groups. All of the videos we'll be posting over the next five days. The powers that be do not want this information to get out, and they're blocking us from sharing in groups that we do not currently manage. Now, fortunately, we manage a ton of groups. And our YouTube account is currently monetized. And that's because we really don't make anything up. We're actually reporting on the news. But we do uh, manage a multiplicity of groups. So we'll be, still be able to share in these 15 locations if we need, if need be. And that's a heads up. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. There's a seismic uptick, as predicted, because of the slowing rotation of the Earth and as well as the uh, uptick in cosmic rays. 
as the magma heats in the subsurface and the volcanic eruptions increase, so does the seismic activity worldwide. And we're going to be watching the Indonesia area. It is really rumbling here. And that's a heads up. Don't forget about our radio show every Wednesday night on Revolution Radio Studio A. You can find it at freedomslips.com. It's 10 p.m. to 12 ma uh, midnight Eastern Standard, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time. We're going to have Ph.D. Anita Bailey, the author of Cold Times, for the entire month of March, talking about preparedness so you can survive and thrive in the coming times. Be safe, everybody.